Hey y'all, this is Cowboy713 from Fishing Crew. Welcome back to the Fishing Crew Knot Tying Tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be talking about splicing lines together. Um, you're going to use this, these methods for tying, either joining two different lengths of line, joining a leader to your line, whether you want to have your you've got mono line and you want to put a fluorocarbon leader on it, or if you have braided line and you want to put a mono or fluorocarbon leader on it, or if you're joining two different lines of different diameters, say you want to put a shock leader on your surf line, um, your surf fishing rig, or you need to just join lines of two different diameters for offshore fishing or what have you. Um, today we're going to talk about the simpler knots um, and we'll do a different video for the Yucatan knot to join the spider hitch or the bimini twist. Um, that's an extremely strong connection for either one of those knots but we will do those in a different video because it's going to be a little bit more complicated to film. But today we're going to go ahead and go over the double uni knot, the blood knot, the surgeon's knot, the slim beauty knot, the Albright knot, and the improved Albright knot. Um, uh, hopefully y'all are able to see the lines I'm using today. I'm going to use um, paracord for the knots for lines that are the same diameter and I will be using weed eater line and monofilament for the knots of different diameter lines. So we're going to start off with a double uni knot. First what you're going to do is you're going to take your two lines and you're going to give yourself a little bit of room here. You don't have to have a whole lot of room for this. Now we talked about the uni knot last time where you I told you you could use it for multiple different applications. This is one of the applications you can use it for. So you're going to go ahead and take your first line and you're just going to do a uni knot just like we did with the hook. This is going to go, I'll give myself some more room here. You're going to take your uni knot and this is going to go around, make your loop just like so. And then you're going to take, let me get this out of here so you can see a little better contrast. Um, you're going to take your tag end here and it's going to go around both lines. One, two, three, and we'll do four. Okay, so we have four there. I'm going to tighten this down just a little bit. I'm not going to make it super tight here. And I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to bring, make my loop like so. And I'm going to do one. Again, I'm going around both lines here. Two, three, and four. And we're going to go ahead and tighten this one down a little bit as well. Okay, so you've got your two loose uni knots right there. And you can see the doubled line in between. I'm going to go through and tighten this down. Now I'm using paracord, so this is not going to tighten down as pretty as it would with mono. I'm going to have to help it a little bit. So, there's one uni knot tightened down. For monofilament, all you have to do is pull on the tag ends and these will tighten down on their own. And there's your second uni knot tightened down. And now all you're going to do is pull in the two main lines. You're going to leave the tag ends alone and it's going to slide just like that till both knots seat up with each other. And you're going to pull, keep pulling and this will tighten down nice and tight. Those will snug down real well. You can tug on the tag ends just a little bit to uh, help them seat better and then again finish off by pulling on the main lines. Then you would go through and you would trim off these tag ends here. And there you have it. There's the double uni knot. Pretty strong knot. Works a lot like a fireman's grip where you're, you're grabbing the hands like that. Um, these knots just back up to each other and they prevent from pulling out. Now this knot shines in uh, lines of very similar diameter. I like using this knot for doing say a monofilament main line to a fluorocarbon leader or 
braid to a fluorocarbon or monoliter. Um, now if you are going to use braid for this, you want to do about five wraps with the mono and then you want to do about eight wraps with the braid. The braid typically has a little bit smaller diameter, it's also slicker than mono. The more wraps you do, the more secure it is, but you also don't want to go overboard with it. So, there is your double uni knot. Again, you would trim off these tag ends here. But there you have it. Nice, simple knot. Very easy to tie, very quick. You just want to make sure it's seated down nice and tight, and it will work out very well for you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next knot. Okay, so the next knot we're going to learn how to tie today is the blood knot. For this, we're going to go through again and give ourselves some doubled over line here. And now you're going to take the one line and you're going to wrap it around the second line. There you go. And now we're going to take the tag end here and we're going to put it between the two lines like this where we started. Okay. So there you have the one line wrapped around. It comes back and goes between the two lines right there. Now I'm just going to hold this with one finger just like so. And I'm going to go through and wrap the other side. One, two, three, four, and we're going to go ahead and put this one through this little gap right here. Now, the trick here is you want these to go in opposite directions. So this one goes through the front. I want this one to come through the back like so. As you can see those two lines are going in opposite directions. Now you're going to want to kind of pull on these just a little bit to snug them down so they're not slipping out. And then you're going to pull on your main lines and this whole thing is going to cinch down together just like it is. And there you go. I'm not going to tighten it any tighter than that because I need to get it apart. But you'd cinch this down nice and tight. These two knots would snug up together really well. And you get this nice pretty uniform knot. See it pretty well here. Again you would trim off these two tag ends. But this cinched it, cinches down real nice and even. And it gives you this nice really streamlined uniform knot. This is a great knot for tying... Um, Again, two lines of very similar diameter, and just like you did with the uh, um, with the uni knot, if you are doing braid, you are going to want to do more wraps with the braid. You don't need to do quite so many with the mono, just because the braid is slicker and thinner. Typically, even if you're using similar diameters, um, that way it won't slip. Um, but this is an excellent knot. I love using this knot for when I'm uh, tying up my fly fishing leaders. Um, makes a nice uniform knot. It uh, gives great transition in the lines here. So there you go. There's your blood knot. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one. Okay, so the next knot we're going to learn how to tie is the surgeon's knot. Now this knot is better if you're using just going to be tying on a short leader on the end of your line. Or it can be used to splice lines if you are if you still have all the other line on a spool. If you've got 50 yards of line not on a spool, this is going to be a giant pain to try to tie this knot because of how you have to tie it. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull your lines doubled up like this, and then you're going to go through and loop back. So now I have both of my lines looped together. Okay, So now you're going to take the tag into this line and your main line here and you're going to fit both of them through this loop. And you're going to pull them all the way out. Okay, So you've got an overhand knot right there with both of the lines. Now you're going to go through and do that again. 
Okay, and tag in's through, and the main line for the other is through. And now you're going to do this one more time. Tag in is through, main line is through. And so now you have a triple overhand knot right there. Now what you're going to do is you're going to pull on both tag ends and main lines on both sides. And this knot is going to coil down on itself, like so. Again, I'm not going to tighten this down super tight because I've got to get this undone. But there is your surgeon's knot. It does actually create a really small uniform knot there if I was to tighten down the, tighten this down all the way. The key to this knot though is you have to make sure that both the main lines and the tag ends are pulled tight. If you don't, this knot will not seat well. You'll have loops that are tighter than others and some that are looser than others and it just won't work well. It won't hold. But there's your surgeon's knot. Nice strong knot. And again, if you're doing braid to braid for this, you want to do probably eight loops or so. Mono, you typically do about five when I do it. Um, I just did three for the demonstration here. But that is the surgeon's knot. Again, at the end you would go through and you would trim off your tag ends. And I didn't mention this, this before, but as any knot you're tying, you always want to make sure you wet down your knot before you start tightening it down. You don't have friction weak in your line. So there's the surgeon's knot. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, for these next three knots, we are going to be using uh, weed eater line and monofilament. So you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And they have two different diameters. This is 0 .065 inch weed eater line, and this is 30 pound monofilament. Um, the first knot we're going to do is the um, Slim Beauty knot. This knot is great for tying on um, like shock leaders because it has a real small profile on it. Um, it goes through the guides of um, your surf rods really easily and really well. Um, that's one reason this knot was created was by a surf fisherman looking for a nice um, smooth transition between the two di diameter lines to go through a surf rods guides more easily so um, oh and there's a lot of different variations of this knot there's a lot of different ways you can tie it um, the key element is what I'm going to do with this weed eater line here in just a second you would typically be doing this with 50 pound mono um, 80 pound mono what have you, whatever size surf um, shock leader you're wanting to use. I typically use 50. I don't find a need to use anything more than 50 most of the time. But in general, you want your shock leader to be 10 pounds of line to 1 ounce of weight. So if you're using a 5 ounce weight, you want at least 50 pound shock leader. However, mono does stretch, and if you're using a monofilament like Berkeley Big Game, your breaking strength is typically actually higher than... Uh, what it says on the package anyway, so I use 50 for everything um, But again the rule is 10 to 1 So here's how we're going to tie this knot first. You're going to take your heavier line shock leader, whatever and You're going to create a double overhand knot. So you're going to go through the loop once and through the loop again So you have your doubled overhand knot right there now you're going to go through and you're going to tighten this down like so and it creates a figure eight in the line as you can see right here nice pretty figure eight now you're going to take your other line your thinner diameter line and you're going to take the line and pass it through the figure eight so you see how the figure eight is raised on one side and it's flat on the other? What you want to do is make this go in the raised side, like so. And you want to bring it back out the other side. Okay? So 
so it goes straight through. If you were to put it the other way, it would be caught over top of this ridge right here, and that's not what you want because it won't tighten down correctly. Now what you're going to do, this is the way I tie it, is you're going to take this and you're going to actually use a uni knot, like we just talked about a few minutes ago, on this end. So you're going to go through and you make your loop. You're going to go one, two, three, four. Okay, so you have your figure eight here. You get your uni over here. Now you're going to pull on both sides of your lighter line, your tag end and your main line, and you're going to cinch this down. Now I'm not going to make it super tight right now, but I've got it pretty well cinched down. See a little bit better right there. And now I'm going to go through and pull this figure eight knot until it collapses. I have to get a pair of pliers. And, oops, I'm sorry, you can see how that knot collapsed right there. Normally you'd be able to actually get this knot to completely collapse on itself and it would make two, like, like a um, barrel knot right there. Now you're going to take your main line for your thinner diameter line and you're going to take your shock leader or your thicker line here and you're going to pull on both ends to where they seat up together and then cinch down next to each other. Now I need to pull on my uni knot here just a little bit tighter and as you can see these two knots have seated up against each other just tightening down my tag in there and you're going to tighten the two together and there you go there is the slim beauty knot as you can see it kind of tapers normally you would do more wraps over here especially if you're using braid you're going to do about I use 10 wraps on braid with this another way you can do it is you can create a doubled line on this side with a spider hitch or a bimini twist and have the doubled braided line coming through here but there you can kind of see the profile of the knot let me see if I can So you've got the wraps over here create a nice smooth transition. It's not quite so smooth this way, but the design of this knot is so it goes um, smoothly out the guides when you're casting. So it's got a nice smooth transition going this direction. Going this way, it's still fairly smooth because when you tie this in lighter lines, this knot will tighten down and, and cinch down even smaller. Um, it's just very difficult to get it to do with this heavy duty weedy line. But that is a slim beauty knot. Again, you want to use, um, you want to lubricate your knots. You want to make sure they cinch down nice and smoothly. Little friction, so you very little friction, so you um, don't weaken your line with um, heating it up by creating friction when you're pulling on it. And there you go. That is a slim beauty knot. Great knot. I use this knot quite a bit whenever I'm doing my uh, shock leaders. Especially when I'm using my lighter rigs, I typically use a uh, Bimini twist to a Yucatan knot when I'm doing heavier stuff. But if I'm doing like a 30 pound shock leader to 10 pound or 12 pound uh, main line for some of my smaller surf setups, this is one of my favorite knots to use. And so that is the Slim Beauty knot. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Next knot we're going to learn is the Albright knot. For this knot, you're going to take your heavier line here, shock leader, heavy leader, whatever you want to use or use it for, and you're going to double the line over. I'm going to go ahead and pinch this so you have the doubled line here. Now you're going to take your lighter line and you're going to insert it through the loop created by the doubled line here. I'm going to give myself some excess. 
and I'm going to pull it up a little ways, just like this. And now what I'm going to do is start doing wraps around all three, both sides of the heavier leader and around the mono that is your lighter line in between. So you're going to go around and you're working your way back towards the end of the loop here. So just like this. You want to take care not to overlap any of your wraps because if you do they can cut each other and it will fail. Um, this knot will break if those knots overlap and cut through each other. But you just want to kind of work your way down towards the end of the loop. Okay, so we've got a nice set of uniform wraps right there. And I'm going to pinch all this off so it doesn't go anywhere. And now what you want to do is you want your tag in to go out the same way it came, the uh, main line came in. So it's going to go out through that loop just like that. So now you see I've got both my lines going out of the same loop. And now I'm going to use my fingers and help this knot while I'm pulling on this side on both the tag end and the main line now I'm going to slowly cinch this down Pull that nice and tight, and there you have it. That is the Albright knot. You can see all those wraps are nice and uniform, none of them cross over each other. Creates that nice barrel right there. Both lines are coming out the same side of the knot here, and it's cinched all the way down to where that loop is. Now you're going to go through and you will trim off your tag ends. on both sides and get and there you go there is your Albright Special. Very nice, neat, uniform knot. Comes out very clean. It's a very strong knot. I don't think I've ever had one of these fail. Um, as long as it was tied correctly. But there you go. That is the Albright Special. It's a very popular knot. Especially for tying lines of... Um, very different diameters. Again, just like with the Slim Beauty Knot, you can do, if you're doing braid, you can do a doubled line here with a Bimini Twist or a Spider Hitch to tie this. It's a little bit more complicated, just takes a little bit more time to do it. But that is the Albright Special. And there you go. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, the last knot, last knot we're going to learn today is the improved Albright. It's extremely similar to the Albright Special, except for it's a little bit different at, right at the end of the knot. Um, this knot was developed um, as a better way to tie on with braid if you're not going to use a doubled line. Um, I've never really found a need to necessarily do this with braid. Um, the Albright Special itself works just fine for me, but I mean, if you want a little bit of extra insurance, this is still a great knot to know. So, I've got my doubled line here. I'm going to take my smaller diameter line and I'm going to put it through the loop just like we did just a minute ago. 
give myself some slack on my tag end. And I'm going to go through and start doing my wraps. Two. Again, we're taking care to make sure none of our wraps overlap each other. We don't want them to cut into each other. Now I'm going to go, oops, don't do that. I'm going to go ahead and pinch this off. I'm going to pull on my main line over here just a tad. I'm going to go ahead and slide this knot, slide the wraps down here a little bit, get myself a little bit closer. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to take the tag in here, and instead of just inserting it through and pulling it over like we did with the other, with the regular Albright Special, now we're going to go through and do some wraps on this side of the loop. So there's one wrap here. Again, you don't want these wraps to uh, overlap each other. Sorry for bumping the camera here. We're just going to go ahead and do four. And then well, we'll do one more to get it through. And you want, again, you want your tag end to be coming out the same direction as your main line went in. And I'm going to use my fingers again. There's a good, you can see what I've got going on here. I've got my main wraps over here. And I've got the wraps on the tag end right there. I'm going to go ahead and pull and kind of work this knot down to the end. Again, if you're using smaller lines and you were lubricating your knots like you're supposed to, this knot will just slide into place. You should not have to help it at all. There's everybody cinched down. And there you go. So you can see the main wraps over here. And you can see the wraps for the um, on the tag on the uh, loop down below. Um, all that does really is allows it to cinch that down in there real tight. The the harder you pull on the main line, the the tighter this will actually get, um, and it prevents it from slipping and coming undone. Again, this method was developed for use with braid, being that it's super thin and super slick um, it has a tendency to slip sometimes especially when you're using in conjunction with large mono um, so that is the improved Albright special and there is our last knot for the night alright guys again I am Cowboy713 from Fishing Crew um, hoping you're liking. I hope. Excuse me. I hope you're liking these videos. Um, I hope you're learning a lot. Um, maybe even following along while you're watching me tie these, so you can learn them hands-on. Um, again, if there's any knots that I haven't done and you would like to see, please shoot me a message down below in the comments or hit me up on Fishing Crew. Um, be happy to hear back from you. Get some feedback see what you think um, uh, again hope y'all are enjoying this y'all have a great night and we will catch you next time